All right, let's talk about the larynx real quick. I'm going to go over the 14 terms that you have in your sheet. Uh, just, you know, section number D and all those Roman numerals on your packet of pain. All right, so pretty straightforward here. The first couple terms are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the thyroid cartilage here, this is where the thyroid gland sits. Pretty straightforward. You've got the laryngeal prominence sitting right on the top here, also known as the Adam's apple. It's, it's usually very visible in males. Um, the hyoid bone, you guys already know about. It sits right up here. It's really important uh, with the structure and function of this of the larynx. Um, right here, you've got a membrane connecting the larynx to the hyoid. And this is called, uh, actually, it's the thyroid cartilage specifically to the hyoid bone. So it's called the thyrohyoid membrane right here. Uh, and then you also have this ring of cartilage below here, just below these two pieces of muscle called the cricoid cartilage. And it is connected to the larynx via the cricothyroid ligament. And then below the cricoid cartilage, you just have tracheal rings. And so with the tracheal rings versus the cricoid cartilage, if we rotate this structure around, notice that the tracheal rings don't connect in the back, whereas the cricoid cartilage does. And so remember that the the esophagus is actually what's running posterior to all of these structures. And so if you're in a situation where you need to close off the esophagus, pushing on the trachea actually doesn't do it very well because there's a lot of flexibility within the tracheal's muscles and these conne this connective tissue that connects the ends of the tracheal rings. But if you look at the back of the cricoid cartilage, it's actually very, very large and it's a continuous piece of hyaline cartilage, which is relatively stiff. So if you're from the anterior view, and you're giving someone mouth to mouth, especially in a, a drowning situation, you're going to have a high likelihood that they're going to vomit. And one of the ways to prevent that, or at least slow it and feel when it's happening, uh, is actually to apply a little bit of pressure to the cricoid uh, cartilage. That way you can close off the esophagus as best as possible. And it won't work anywhere else besides here. All right, so I think I covered all the terms that you can see from this perspective. Those ones are pretty straightforward. Let's move on to some of the more difficult ones. As we rotate to the back, we have three cartilages the, that cause a little bit of a problem for students. The arytenoid cartilage, the cuneiform cartilage, and the corniculate cartilage. Uh, the arytenoid and the corniculate are coupled together. And so I'd circle those on your sheet and kind of keep those grouped together in your head because geographically or anatomically they are right next to each other. Uh, really then all you have to know is which one's more superior and much, much smaller. And that would be the corniculate cartilage, which is visible right here. So this smaller chunk here and here, that is both cartilage that is called the corniculate cartilage. The arytenoid a retinoid cartilage is actually much larger, and on other models you can see it more clearly, but it's inferior to the corniculate, and it's in this model it's actually covered up slightly, or mostly actually, by the muscle here. Um, the third cartilage is the cuneiform cartilage, and the cuneiform cartilage is usually really underrepresented, but where you can see it on this model is right up here, this little blue chunk here. And you'll see the sign of the cuneiform cartilage or the, the, the impact it has by looking at uh, the mucosal folds in here. And you'll actually see a bump here and a bump here. And then you'll see a second bump more posterior. The more anterior bump is from the cuneiform cartilage. If you watch that singing video again, you'll see that there are two bumps moving back and forth uh, along with the vocal cords. And that one that's more anterior from when you're looking from a superior view, all you can tell is that it's more anterior, and that would be the cuneiform. From this perspective, it's also more superior. Uh, and then the one more posterior connected to the arytenoid is the corniculate. So again, cuneiform, corniculate, arytenoid. And let's take another perspective, another look at the arytenoid on a different model. Here's another one. Here you can see it more completely. You can see the corniculate right on top, just kind of like the tip right here, the sharp little tip, uh, and no real cuneiform. You can see the bump from the cuneiform here. I'm not totally sure why these are numbered the same, because uh, they're clearly different structures. So don't be thrown off by the similar numbering on here, but the cuneiform is not, not really visible. Um, let me show you one more picture of the cuneiform and corniculate, because I think it'll help you 
pick out see it ideally and this is the picture that's in your lab manual so here's our corniculate here is our retinoid and then check out the cuneiform it's really a separate structure and again in most cases you just see this remnant of it which is just this little bump right on top if we scroll up this is some great pictures in here you may ah, this one isn't zoomed out enough to see it well, we'll come back to those pictures in just a second all right so those are the main cartilages um, and now we're going to move on oh I guess the one thing I didn't mention was the epiglottis the epiglottis is pretty straightforward um, it's poking its head up right here. The epiglottis is made of elastic connective tissue. This structure is really important because it prevents food from coming back down into your upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract. And what actually happens is the entire larynx shifts up when you swallow. If you swallow right now and you feel your larynx, um, it actually elevates because of the muscles in below your tongue and the ones that are connected to the hyoid. And it actually lifts the larynx, but the epiglottis stays anchored and covers up uh, the larynx itself and the opening specifically. It doesn't cover the entire larynx but it prevents food from going down the wrong direction. On this model they've removed the epithelial tissue and so you can really see the cartilage structure. This is a really flexible, really elastic structure that when you gulp uh, will this larynx and glottis will, epi will elevate into it and the, then this will sort of close kind of like the lid on a trash can just closing and then it opens up again when you need to breathe. All right, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is actually from this perspective, because now we're going to take a mid-sagittal section of the entire larynx, and the larynx is the entire structure here. It's a combination of the epiglottis, the uh, laryngeal, uh, the larynx itself, uh, as well as the different folds inside and all of the arytenoid cartilage and corniculate cartilage. And so it's really, the larynx is an entire structure in and of itself. But more specifically, there's a region in here where you're actually doing the sound production and modifying the frequency. Uh, that and what we saw mostly in the video and in the pictures we just looked at, this area is called the glottis. And the glottis is where you're going to find your true vocal cords, which is number 23, indicated by number 23, but is this ridge right here. And then there's also the false vocal folds which we talked about briefly in class. And so don't get those confused. They're the false vocal cords and the true vocal cords, also known as the vestibular folds and the vocal folds. And if we take a look at these pictures again from the superior view, you can really see and it'll kind of remind you really the, the big difference is the tissue type. But here the VF is representing the vocal cords that. Sorry, <laughs> that was a really loud noise in the room. We had that earthquake last night, so I'm all tripped out about aftershocks. All right, uh, anyway, where did my picture go? There it is. Sorry about that. All right, so anyway, you've got the connective tissue here. These are the actual vocal cords, and you can see them really clearly. The whole structure that we're looking at here is the glottis. And then there's the vestibular folds and the vocal cords right in here. And so these are what are actually producing sound. These are just a covering, essentially, and are normally not producing sound. So don't get those confused. And if we come back to the model, the model is usually what is a little bit more confusing. Just remember also that the true vocal cords are more inferior. And laying over the top of them are the vestibular folds or also known as the false vocal cords. And just a reminder, here's the epiglottis again. Don't be thrown off by the different perspective. You've got the thyroid cartilage, the epiglottis, and epiglottis, epi on top of, is referring to this whole structure of all the folds and the tissue associated with it. And again, this structure is the entire glottis, which exists within the larynx. Epiglottis is right on top of it. And that's pretty much it.